Let's see if I can see really quickly which one it is in. I suggest that you take these notes that I'm not going to for because I'm about to write the entire process down of how to write Lewis structures. The book is going to have this exact same thing, maybe written a little bit differently. I tend to stick with my way because I think it is uh, better explained. But it's going to be in chemical bond. It's going to be in chapter 10. Okay. If the valence electrons are what matters, and generally speaking, they are what matters because the valence electrons are the electrons that interact between atoms. And atoms' valence electrons are kind of the ones that go out and mingle with other elements. It's kind of like their, it's what dictates their behavior. It's the outer electrons. And these electrons are either shared or given and taken. When we're talking about giving and taking, we're talking about ionic compounds. When we're talking about Lewis structures today and everything that we're talking about today, we're only talking about covalent compounds and we are especially <coughs> concerned about making these covalent bonds. So, up until this point we didn't talk much about covalent bonding. We did talk about covalent compound nomenclature and I'm going to pass those back to you when we get over to the lab. But the nomenclature for these types of uh, compounds, carbon, tetrachloride, or sulfur, trioxide, these things have shared electrons between them. Meaning that if we looked at the Lewis dot diagram for carbon, how many dots should we expect to be around this carbon? Four. Four. How do we know that? Well, we look at the electron configuration, 2s2, 2p2. In the valence shell, the outermost energy level, there's only four electrons. Each of these four electrons, two of them are S, two of them are P, but in a Lewis dot diagram, we don't care about that. We don't care about the S and the P. All we care is that we have the proper amount. And if we look at something like chlorine, we should have seven. Remember halogens, group 7A, should have seven electrons. When we talked about metals wanting to give up electrons, right? Metals are a friend that's willing to let you borrow money, give it away. When metals come in contact with nonmetals, there is an exchange of electrons. When two nonmetals come together, I lie two cheap people or two people who are frugal, if you will, those people are very unlikely to give you anything, right? They might share something with you, right? They might, you know, help you out a little bit, but they're not going to give up an electron. And that's what we see when we see two nonmetals coming together. When we see two nonmetals, we see sharing of electrons, and that makes what we call a covalent bond. Right? So, mm, I spelled that way wrong. And by covalent, <laughs> remember, valence shell, covalent means that the valence electrons in each of the atoms involved are co coming together to create a bond. Now, it's very important is to why. So, when we're talking about metals, and we say that sodium wants to lose one electron, what is the reason for that? Well, sodium wants to become plus one because it wants to give an electron to then have a full valence shell complete octet. All chemical bonding is trying to achieve that. That's the purpose of elements interacting with each other. At the very basic level, in the basic statement, elements interact with other elements to try to achieve octet, whether it be ionic bonding, which we're not talking about, or covalent bonding using two nonmetals. So that's what we're going to show. So for carbon to want to fulfill this octet, how many electrons do we need? Four. We need four electrons. 
for our tech. And then in chlorine, we need how many? One electron for our tech. But if we cannot give and take using nonmetals, what we can do is share. And that sharing of these electrons in the valence shell of these elements still counts. It still counts. If you can share some or all of these with the other atom, then that will count towards how many are needed. And if you could share some or all of these from this atom with carbon, you could get the electrons that you need. So, the proper way to think about this, and, and, and I think about this in a process, I'm process oriented when I think about this, is that we need to make an octet with carbon by forming a bond. What you are going to see is that a line in a Lewis structure, a line is equal to two electrons. So when a line is drawn between atoms, you assume that there are two electrons. If we look, and, and you can kind of see this intuitively, if we look here at this Lewis diet structure, and we took the four electrons from carbon, and we see that chlorine happens to have this lonely electron, this seventh electron out there, that seventh electron needs a partner to fulfill octet on chlorine, and each one of these electrons around carbon needs a partner to fulfill octet on carbon, so, what happens if we start sharing these electrons and making everyone happy, making all of the chlorines happy, making all of, making that one carbon happy, we see that there are eight dots, doesn't matter what color they are, there are eight electrons around the entire, every atom in this entire molecule. And that is going to be what we are trying to achieve every time we are drawing a Lewis structure. This is not a Lewis structure, this is a Lewis dot diagram still, but this is not the proper way to represent this. The proper way to represent this is to replace any two dots that, and, and I guess I should just say, this goes between atoms only. And replace these dots that are in between atoms with a line, which means that our carbon, CCl4, it's going to look like this. This is, in fact, the Lewis structure properly drawn. There are a couple things that we can check. And I'm going to go, I'm going to make these list of rules really quickly and how we get there. I just kind of want to show you what this means. And now I'm going to show you the process to draw them. There are eight electrons associated. There are eight electrons associated with every atom here. Octet is fulfilled. We have all atoms happy. Once we have all atoms happy, then we have the best Lewis structure. Notice that these lines equal two dots, so two, four, six, eight. Notice that I'm showing the dots around chlorine. Those are non-bonding electrons, and we're going to talk a little bit more about those. But these bonding electrons are what's important. All octet is fulfilled on every atom here. Now, somebody might ask, well, how did you know that carbon was in the middle? Or how did you know that 
there wasn't, it wasn't in a line. Carbon, chlorine, chlorine, chlorine. Those are the things that you have to do to practice and become comfortable with, but I'm gonna give you some general guidelines for that. All right. So, generally speaking, to draw the Lewis structure, we're gonna give you the compound first. And the compound is going to be, in this case, let's look at um, CH4. Once you have the compound, the first thing that I encourage you to do is to count out total valence electrons. So one, determine total valence electrons. And in this particular case, what would that number be? We have four <coughs> electrons in the valence shell associated with carbon. We have four associated with hydrogen. There should be a total of eight. And you'll see me write this as VE, valence electron. The second step. Determine central atom. And when I say central atom, I'm talking about the atom in the middle. In this case, it's carbon. Now, this determining of central atom, for the scope and purpose of this class, I'm going to keep it very straightforward. If you were in general chemistry one, it might be a little more convoluted because they look at uh, more complex structures. But generally speaking, the central atom is going to be the atom furthest left on a periodic table. So the atom furthest left. So there's also something that needs to be said when carbon is in compound it's always in the middle carbon is that likes to always be in the mix when carbon is involved it's always in the middle very few instances that it is not. So, the central atom then, in our example, hydrogen is furthest to the left, right, if, we, if you go by my rule, but then we see that carbon is also in this compound, so carbon has to go in the center. central atom and create bonds, single bonds, between central atom and all other atoms. Create one, excuse me, single bond between central atom and all other atoms. You are going to want to write this down, I'm telling you, because when you go home with your stuff, if you follow the rules and you then subsequently learn the rules, then you will have no problem. But those of you all who felt a little, you know, a little wary about that last quiz with the electron stuff, this is getting, this is going to be tough to get these right. This, this says a draw central atom and create one single bond between central atoms and all other atoms. 
until octet on central atom is fulfilled so and I will call this 3a cuz this this rule gets this is where we get to actually drawing things. So, what is a central atom? We determine that to be C. How many total uh, valence electrons do we have? We determine that to be eight. But, and this needs, I'm, I'm sorry. Until central atom is fulfilled or there are no more valence electrons. Now, now, so draw a central atom, create one bond on the central atom to fulfill octet until there are no more valence electrons. So, in our case, our structure, C, should create one bond, one line between each hydrogen. How many hydrogens do we have? Four. How many bonds then should we be showing? Four. Four. Because... Four single bonds equates to eight electrons, which equates to octet being fulfilled on our carbon. So, we have now done 3A. Three 3B. Place any leftover valence electrons on atoms with highest electronegativity or let me rephrase that because we haven't talked much about periodic trend. Atoms furthest to the right. until octet fulfilled or no more famous electrons. All right, so if these four bonds were used for 3A, how many total valence electrons were used? Eight, so we started with eight, we used eight, we have zero left. You're going to see me use this kind of math from here on out as long as we're talking about Lewis structures. You should do the same. Do we have any leftover? No. So you can skip 3B for this one. You don't have to do 3B. Three C. If octet still not fulfilled, create double or triple bonds until fulfilled. So, B and C right now we don't need for this molecule. I'm gonna, we're going to do a bunch of practice and we're going to see those. And this is, this is using lone pairs. And I'm going to show that example when we get to one. And for 
the examples that we are going to do now one one last one thing that I really I want to mention right now is octet fulfilled on hydrogen no. whoa yes. yes what do we know about hydrogen it only needs two to fulfill its valence shell because of the first energy level only has two electrons. So hydrogen's octet is fulfilled with just two. So hydrogen is the only atom that you're going to see that's not an exception to the rule. It's the only atom you're going to see that doesn't need eight because it doesn't have room for eight. It only has room for two. So hydrogen being a central atom is very unlikely. First thing. It's never really a central atom because of that. It can't really house more than one connection, one bond. Carbon octet fulfilled, hydrogen octet fulfilled. We have CH4. What would be the name of CH4? Carbon CH4. What's the name of that? Based on the rule, you just took the quiz. Carbon tetrahydride, not hydrogen. Anybody know what the common name for CH4? Methane? Yes, methane gas. Yes. The main proponent of? <laughs> it's the main proponent of flatulence. This is why you can light your gas on fire. It's chemistry. It's a hydrocarbon. It's flammable. That is what you smell when you smell gas. So, methane, but the proper terminology is carbon tetrahydride, CH4. Okay. Now, let's use this example again for another covalent compound. You're going to have to do this process over and over and over again. By the time you're tired of this, if you're tired of this process, by the time you do all of these Lewis structure practices that I'm going to give you, if you're not getting it right, then you can't stop. You have to keep practicing. If you are tired of it and you're getting them all correct, then you know what you're doing. All right, let's look at ammonia. 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 Yeah, at the bottom it says octet still not fulfilled, create double and triple bonds until it is fulfilled and you use lone pairs. And I'm going to show that. Lone. Lone, yeah. Okay. NH3, ammonia, what we use as a cleaning supply. We all know the smell of that. You can also pass out if you inhale too much of that. All right. Total valence electrons. How many valence electrons associated with nitrogen? Five. How many associated with each one of the hydrogens is one. So five plus three is eight. Well, we got eight valence electrons. Determine the central atom. Hydrogen is furthest left, but remember, and we can add that here if you want to, That hydrogen is not a central atom. So you don't have to worry about hydrogen when we're talking about furthest left. Mainly because hydrogen is the only non-metal that is over here. All the rest of the non-metals are to the right of the stir step line. So we're talking about non-metals when we're talking about covalent compound. So we really don't need to worry about anything past that. All right? So that means that the central atom should be nitrogen. N. So if we draw the central atom and create a single bond between all other atoms, then we end up with N H 
H, H, H. Need to make a need to make a little star now. We're gonna make a little star and 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 add to the rules. We have made a single bond between the central atoms and all other atoms involved. We said do this until the octet is fulfilled or there are no more valence electrons. So, based on what we know about octet fulfilled for each of these atoms, is the octet fulfilled for hydrogen? Uh, yes. 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 Every hydrogen has its octet fulfilled. Why? Because it needs two. So it needs a single bond. That's it. Single bond. Do we have octet fulfilled for nitrogen? Yes. yes. No. 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 How many electrons are associated with nitrogen? Five. Five. No, in this diagram. Six. Six. Diagram. We're talking about octet fulfilled in the structure, not in the free element. Two, four, six. You have six. Nitrogen has five valence electrons for the total valence electrons. How many is it associated with in the structure? Six. Six. Two, four, six. Structure is what this, these rules are talking about structure. These rules are talking about structure, especially when we're talking about octet. A covalent compound is talking about the structure, not the ground state. We're using the ground state electrons to build the structure. We're using the, the numbers. So we have six. We need two more. So now let's look at B. We started with eight. We have used six for three A. We have left ourselves with two. Place any leftover valence electrons, two, on atoms in the structure. That's what that means, on atoms in the structure that are furthest to the right of the periodic table. In this case, the atom furthest to the right. <coughs> to the right. Yeah, nitrogen. Nitrogen, correct. And place them until octet is fulfilled or no more valence electrons. And I need to put an uh, edit to this. They need to be placed as pairs. Lone pairs is the proper terminology. And these lone pairs, <laughs> one, two. You want to place them in an area on the atom that is does not have any bonds in that area. Again, you don't want to put the dots right down here or here or here. You want to put them in the area that is free. Now, we have, now we want to go back to our total valence electrons. Make sure that we show that we've used it. We have none left. There should be nothing added to this structure. Even if the structure isn't finished, you still can't add anything because there are no more electrons to add. Now let's look at C. If octet is not fulfilled, well, let's go back and look. Octet is now fulfilled on all hydrogens, two electrons, single bond. Octet is now fulfilled on nitrogen. Remember, the dots count as electrons, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Once that is done, you have used all valence electrons and octet is fulfilled on every atom, we are done. That is the Lewis structure for ammonia. Mm -hmm. um, how the H's are placed like? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. As long as there, you can put one the H on the top, you can put an H on. You know, you can put the lone pair anywhere. Let's put it that way. But just like in the Lewis dot diagram, there are four sides. And those four sides generally, until we get to upper level Lewis structures, for now, those four sides are going to be the sides that you want to work on. All right? Okay. Another example. We're just going to keep doing these. We're, again, we're working with the simple examples. Those of y'all who are bored and like, oh, this is easy. Okay. Give me a minute. 
water, which we've all seen, but this is why it is drawn this way. H2O, total valence electron. Eight, notice all these examples have eight. That's why they're the easy ones. You have to crawl before you walk. Central atom here, oxygen. Draw a central atom and create single bonds between that and all other atoms. Oxygen, H, H. We have used how many total electrons? Four. We've used four. That leaves us with four. four. Place any left over on the furthest to the right atom in this case, which is oxygen. One, two, three, four. None left. Do we have octet <coughs> fulfilled on all atoms? Yes. Yep, and there is your Lewis structure for water. Two lone pairs on the oxygen, two single bonds to the hydrogen. Takes a little bit. Just to get some more practice, name. Phosphorus trifluoride. Uh, those of you all who are old enough to remember this, or I don't know if they still do this, he's shaking his head. I'm not that much older than you guys. Some of the people in here are older than me. Back in the day, when I was in elementary school, every once in a while they would come around and they would make us use these fluoride treatments for your teeth. Does anybody remember that? Uh, yeah. right? We didn't know what it was. You had to take it in the cup, you switch it around your mouth, and you spit it out. They told you not to swallow it. It was fluoride, it was actually fluoride ions that help strengthen the enamel and stuff in your teeth. Now there's been a lot of research since then that said that stuff is bad for you. I don't really know how true that is, but just a little tidbit about chemistry and, you know, when you were kids you didn't even know anything about it. Your parents didn't either, but the school system deemed that it was, you know, healthy and necessary. PF3, how many total valence electrons now? But total valence electron combines all of them. Boy, boy. I don't want anybody calculating anybody's paycheck in here. It's a simple math. How many? Eight. No, no, no. Total valence electron. How many atoms of phosphorus do we have? Five. No, how many atoms? One. So that brings how many electrons? Five. How many atoms of fluorine do we have? Three. And how many each fluorine brings? Seven. 7, 14, 21 plus 5, 26. Four boys. Total valence electrons. Total valence electrons. Every atom counts. Sound like a chemical politician. I mean, you could, you could ask any of those politicians the simplest chemistry question. They wouldn't give an answer. Really want somebody who doesn't know chemistry running the U.S. <laughs> All right, determine central atom. Phosphorus. In this case, we don't have hydrogen, so we don't have to worry about two part three. We also don't have carbon, so carbon is not in the mix. So we go with atom furthest left, which is phosphorus. So our central atom is P. Another thing, 
is that until we get to some more upper level stuff, the halogens generally aren't in the middle. But we'll show you some situations where they are. And you've already seen some of these, some of your polyatomic ions. So, drawing the central atom, P. We have 26. We have used how many? We use six. That leaves us with 20. The next step is to put those electrons in pairs that are left over to atoms that are furthest to the right of the periodic table until their octet is fulfilled. Which atom is furthest to the right? Fluorine. So, these lone pair electrons go on fluorine until octet is fulfilled. So, two, four. Is octet fulfilled on this rightmost fluorine? No. 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 We need two more. We've used six. We need to do the same for all the rest. Six, eight, ten, twelve. 14, 16, 18. So, we've placed leftover valence electrons on atoms furthest to the right until octet fulfilled or no more valence electrons. Now here, in this case, you can make a quick addition to this rule to say then place leftover electrons on any atoms without octet fulfilled. Well, we've used 18. We have two left. They have to go somewhere. When you have them left and you've done the math correctly, then those two electrons belong somewhere. And generally speaking, it's going to work out that you should realize where they belong. They belong on phosphorus because as this structure stands right now, phosphorus does not have octet fulfilled. Phosphorus only has six electrons associated with it. And we've used those last two. We now have used all the valence electrons. We also have octet fulfilled on all atoms. That is the proper Lewis diagram for phosphorus trifluoride. their hand at dual structure. Let's go with if you follow the rules, shouldn't be a problem. You also want to write the name. Just for practice, making sure you know your name, nomenclature.
Convince yourself that you are right. Confidence is key. Being confidently wrong is okay. Now, it's not okay when it comes quiz and test time. You don't drop the vowel. Well, penta iodide. Penta iodide. Yeah, you say penta iodide. So I don't think you say penta iodide. So there's uh, <coughs> T A I. -A -I. Again, it should be 20 valence electrons. If you don't have that right, your structure is going to be pretty impossible to draw. 7, 14, and 6. Yeah, yeah. No. So, uh, I, uh, yeah, I have a feeling you can Yeah. Yeah, because that was. Anybody, anybody think that they have the right structure? Would like to share? Mr. Collins? Yeah, It's really easy. Good to hear. Uh, it's not so easy. Well, like, actually... No, these are the easy examples. I can't easily, give you the problem. Well, I haven't, given you, I haven't given you any of the tough ones yet. My brother was teaching me, but he taught me this before. Right. I don't understand this. He taught me it, like, today. I was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to use this. Or how. Okay. Very important. This is the correct structure, but again, for those that are not extremely confident or like process, you want to go step by step until you know what you're doing. I would put O here. I would then say that my first two bonds here and here are going to give me using four valence electrons. 16 valence electrons left. The rest of my valence electrons need to go around my most furthest right until octet is fulfilled. We have now used 12 valence electrons. That leaves us with four. Those four can be used on oxygen because oxygen's octet is not fulfilled. And that leaves us with zero. And we have the original structure that Mr. Collins helped us with. That is oxygen diiodide. Does it matter the orientation? So could iodine go on either side, left and right? It doesn't matter. Does not matter the orientation for these Lewis structures right now. As long as you draw them correctly. Normally there's a north, south, and east, west to the central atom. We're going to talk about the shapes and how we differentiate shapes from one another on Thursday. That's what best purpose. All right. Any questions about these types? One thing to note is that all of these examples that I've given you thus far are all only have single bonds in them. So now we have to open up the next can of worms, start to introduce when we use 3C, because we haven't had to use 3C yet. 
Rule 3C. All right, the classic example, what a lot of you all and what I put plenty of into the universe every day by talking to you guys, carbon monoxide. If I was breathing out carbon monoxide, we would all be dying. Now, I know my breath isn't that bad. Dooch. CO2, sir. CO2. Carbon dioxide, which is respiration. It's the product of respiration, CO2. We breathe in oxygen. Body spits out carbon dioxide. Plants take carbon dioxide and make more oxygen. So if you keep killing the plants, there won't be much oxygen left. And then we'll just all suffocate as a plant. Unfortunately. All right, how many total valence electrons? 16. Four, six, and six. 16 valence electrons. All right, central atom? Carbon. Carbon, because carbon is involved, it's always in the middle of things, always in the mix. All right, draw central atom and create single bonds. We only need two. Here we have two O's, 16 valence electrons. We have used four. That leaves us with 12. Octet, we need to start putting lone pairs on the atom furthest to the right. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12. We have now used all of our valence electrons. We cannot add any more electrons to this structure, and we now need to reevaluate if we have octet fulfilled on all atoms. Oh, no. We do have octet fulfilled where? Oxygen. On oxygen. Right. We do not have octet fulfilled on carbon, so now we go to 3C, which we haven't had to do. If octet is still not fulfilled, create double bonds first, and then triple bonds if necessary, until fulfilled using lone pairs. Now, the lone pairs that you are using on either oxygens are what we would consider to be equivalent, right? Those lone pairs are equivalent because those oxygens are the same identity. How this is shown, you will take an arrow and draw here, and that will give you this structure. Notice that we've taken a lone pair and created a double bond. Why is this called a double bond? We have two of them. Up until this point, we have only shown you single bonds. This is a double bond. Now, we go back and look at this again. We evaluate. We see that now we have octet still fulfilled on both oxygens, but we do not have octet fulfilled on carbon because carbon only has how many electrons associated with it currently? Six. Six. We need two more. So, we can create <coughs> another double bond using this these lone pairs, and you want to go with the atom with the least lone pair, lone, the atom with the most lone pair. Now you end up with the proper Lewis structure for carbon dioxide as such. Octet fulfilled on both atoms, eight electrons associated with each. We have formed double bonds to do that.
We can use our friend carbon monoxide. Why not? That was a double bond. Those were two double bonds. Yeah, that was an example of a double bond. CO, carbon monoxide. Total valence electrons. 10. There is no central atom because it's only two atoms. You can't have a central atom with only two atoms. Central means it has to be three or more. So you just make a connection between the two things that you have. We've now used two. We have eight left. These eight go as lone pairs on atom with the furthest to the right, minus six leaves us with two, minus two on our carbon leaves us with zero, and now we have a, a situation where carbon is not fulfilled Octet, oxygen is. So what must we do at this point? Add another line. Two. Add another line or create a double bond and reevaluate. So we use the lone pair from the atom with the most lone pairs. Again, to create the double bond, we end up with C double bond O. We notice that octet is still not fulfilled on our carbon. So we can make then a triple bond, taking again from the atom with the most lone pairs, which will give us three covalent bonds to this molecule, and uh, the opportunity for me to introduce, and we're going to have more practice on this, opportunity for me to introduce the idea of formal charge because the carbon in this particular case actually has a negative charge associated with it and oxygen has a positive. Now you say, oh, they're not metals. Then why do they have positive charges or negative charges? This is not an ionic compound, but this has to do with something called formal charge. And I couldn't draw this correctly without putting these here, but you won't have to worry about the formal charge uh, just yet. We, we need to get the, the simpler stuff down for now. But again, the formation of double and triple bonds are a function of needing to fulfill octet. Now, let's take a step, a little step up the, the ladder. Let's go. three different atoms. Up until this point, I've only asked you about two different atoms. Anybody know what that is? Anybody who's been in bio, biochemistry, should recognize that. Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde. It's formaldehyde. Which we formaldehyde, which we have uh, used to preserve organs in. Remember when you're in the science class and your teacher pulled out the brain and it smelled really bad. Never. Well, you never saw a brain. No. Well, you just pop your head open, take a look at your room. No, it's like cow brains. They say preserve. Now they preserve it in something different. It used to be formaldehyde, but formaldehyde is pretty dangerous and flammable. <coughs> So it was a problem. So he started keeping it out of school. Okay. So, it's, so that's a compound? Correct. It's a compound because it has more than one different element. We're learning something. All right. It is covalent because... It's not ion. Uh, well, it's not ion, but why? It's the why. It's two, metals. Metals. two or more non metals. Right. So we're not dealing with metals. So we still can use this rule. We can still use these rules, we can still write this. Just because I've added, made it three elements, that change anything. So, All right, so how many total valence electrons? 12. Four, six, and six, 12. Central atom? Carbon. 
Carbon, we know that because carbon in the mix, carbon's always going to be in the mix. Draw a central atom and create a single bond with all other atoms. Carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. If we have 12, how many do we use to make this structure? We use six. Before we go any further, we see that we have six left. These electrons go on the atom furthest to the right, in this case, oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Octet is fulfilled on oxygen. We don't have any more electrons. We can create a double bond using lone pairs from the only atom up here that has lone pairs, oxygen. Then we end up with this structure. Is octet fulfilled on all atoms? Yes. Yes. Eight electrons associated with all the atoms that need eight, and hydrogens have our single bond. We know they're good. A little bit more difficult one, but if you follow the rules, you should get to the right answer. Follow the rules. Questions? You need to be asking. You got questions? The six left over went as lone pair to the oxygen, correct? So where did the other six go? To the bonds. One, two, three, six, two, four, six, twelve. That's the bond. The second I forget that the line is to make carbon yeah. yeah. oxide, yeah. right? Yeah. Effectively. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I was confused about the, yeah. the yeah. triple. Well, that again, that's about. You don't need four lines. You need eight electrons. Yeah. Four lines will give you octet on carbon, but it doesn't have to be the case all the time. Yeah. That's why I was confused. But that one, that's the, that's one of the exceptions. But it's hard to show a triple bond in any other situation, honestly. So the central bond doesn't need to be octet. The what now? So the central bond meaning carbon, it doesn't need to have the four lines? Only it needs to have eight electrons associated with it. It needs to be octet. Period. Oh. Trying to make up, trying to think of a, a shortcut rule is no good. Follow these. You said hydrogen is the only one. That hydrogen is the only one, well, it's the only one that is not an exception to the rule that doesn't need eight. There are some exceptions to the rule. Generally, we don't talk about them in, in this course. Okay. There's some elements that don't need octet. But carbon doesn't need four lines. Don't think of it that way. Think all atoms, for the most part, need to have eight electrons associated with them in some form or fashion. All right, let's try. Sis. Sis two. Guess if you. Silicon. Disulfide. You have to look at the periodic table. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, so I know where everything is on the periodic table. But where it is on the periodic table tells you how many. <coughs> Sulfur, group 4A or 14, 4. Yes. Sil I mean, silicon, excuse me, 4A, there's 4. Sulfur, 6A, there's 6, and there's 2 of them. 6, 12, and 4, 16. Just a little math. 
Oh, yeah, you look at the group. Oh, okay. That's how they get this up. That was that we we've already went there. <laughs> Valence electron by electron configuration or by group. But you're gonna have to go from everything from valence elect uh, electron configuration, noble gas configuration, number of valence electrons, Lewis dot diagram, and then Lewis structure. Gotta be able to do all of it. And this is all building upon one another. So this only applies to cobalt and bonds, right? Correct. How about we're ionic? We're not worried about no. ionic. But is there? We 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 don't no for ionic bonds. We normally just show the positive charge and the negative charge ion interacting with each other. We don't have to show the sharing of bonding. But this line is is deceiving. The line in these structures is deceiving because it makes you think that that there's this some kind of like a rope. That's holding these atoms together, and it's, it's, that's not really the case. For this course, we don't really get into too much molecular orbital theory, but in general chemistry one, we talk about how bonding is actually the overlapping of wave functions of electrons, and you start getting into quantum mechanics, and, and it's beyond the scope of this class. But it's, it's interesting. So it's, it's, just, it's just a simple. The line is just a simple. The line is just a simple. Okay. Yeah, it's just representing. It's representing the fact that there's two electrons in this area between these atoms. But that's not really what's happening in the physical realm. So, total valence electrons, we got six, six, and four, 16. Central atom, S, S, I, sorry, S, I, excuse me, these S's and S, I's getting confused. What if we have um, two that are on the same uh, uh, class, <laughs> or vertically, so there's not one further to the left? Okay, that's a good question. Generally, you're not, uh, until we get into the more complicated examples, and I'm not really sure how much of that we're going to do, but you do see sulfur and oxygen together. You can see sulfur and oxygen together. Um, Generally speaking, you don't see any of the rest of them, though. Selenium, oxygen, sulfur, oxygen, you'll see, you won't see nitrogen, phosphorus together, you won't see carbon and silicon together, generally. There's no real, and there's a reason why. The electronics don't really match up for that, for fulfillment of octet. So a lot of your compounds are actually dictated by the ability to, to, to get a combination, a whole number ratio that gives you a proper Lewis structure. So here we use four, we get 12 left. Furthest to the right, sulfur, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Minus 12, we're left with zero. We have octet fulfilled on sulfur, but not silicon. Therefore, we need to make two double bonds and the proper Lewis structure Again, it does not matter where your Lewis dots are. They can be on the top, bottom. They can be on the side, bottom, side, top. But this is the proper Lewis structure with double bonds on silicon from both silicon and salt. Now, last thing, and I want to just, just reiterate formal charge. And this, is, this will be it because you need this to kind of understand what that means. And we'll have some more practice when we head over to the lab. That'll be you on your own in the, in the dark territory. If we looked at this structure and we said that silicon, we know, has four electrons, And each of these sulfurs come in with six. And if we drew this Lewis structure with the bonds, the lines, if we drew this and redrew it using only dots, what would we see?
right. This and the Lewis diagram is the same. All I'm doing is showing this in terms of dots and not in terms of lines. These are still double bonds, but I'm differentiating who brought the electrons to the party, right? It's kind of like, some of you are not old enough, but it's kind of like who brought a certain amount of beers or sodas to the party, whatever. Sulfur brings six because of where it is on a periodic table. Silicon brings four because of where it is on a periodic table. When the double bonding, when any bonding is occurring, and I, I don't know if I said this to the extent that needs to be said, bonding is the sharing of an electron, one from one atom, one from another. And that's how you have to think about it. Now, somebody might say, but wait, this lone pair here that we used to create this double bond was associated with sulfur. So how can you say that it was silicon? Well, look, silicon only has one of each of its electrons associated with itself in this structure. This is just a method to get us to the proper structure. Notice here, we see that there are four black dots associated with silicon, and if you look at total number of valence electrons for silicon, then we can determine what is known as formal charge. And formal charge is equal to Valence electrons minus the number of electrons in the Lewis structure associated in Lewis structure. And I'll, I'm going to just abbreviate that LS. So the formal charge for silicon here is equal to, in the ground state, which is where we're working at. We have four valence electrons. In the Lewis structure, remember, in a bond, one of the electrons in that bond has to come from the element that is being bonded, one of them. So if there are four total bonds to silicon, which we see, then half of those total electrons, half of those octet, came from silicon. Silicon brought half to the party, the meat in the middle. So this B minus four, and the formal charge of silicon, zero. Let's look at sulfur, is equal to ground state <laughs> six minus six. The lone pairs are part of the Lewis structure. There are six electrons that sulfur has associated with itself. It's only sharing two. It's got six. Therefore, this Lewis structure has no charge associated with it. It has no formal charge associated with it. Both of these are neutral. Now, back to the example of carbon monoxide, because that's a good example to show the Converse. Actually, we'll do cyanide. If you remember, cyanide is on your polyatomic ion list. Uh, let's not use cyanide. Let's not do that. Let's not. Do that. Well, the reason because that, that adds some more. Let's do carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide again has ten. Carbon is not the central atom because it's only two. We end up with CO246. We've used eight. We're left with two. We end up with two here. We end up having to create a double bond and then a triple bond. And we end up with C triple bond O. Now, if we looked at this in terms of dots, we would see that C looks like that, and that O looks like that. And if we did this calculation really quickly for the formal charge, we would say that C is equal to 4 minus 
blue structure, how many dots are around it associated with carbon? Green dots, five, is equal to negative one, and oxygen is equal to six minus five, which is equal to positive one, which means that our charges they are balanced, which is why this does not have an overall charge in the, in the compound, but this is where the formal charge comes from. <coughs> and formal charge is going to be important because when we get into a little bit more of the uh, more advanced Lewis structures, then we're going to have to use it. We're going to have to use it. All right. We'll take a quick break and head over to the, because I know I'll pass, but we don't have anybody behind it. And we're going to head over to the lab. I have a worksheet that'll be your ticket to go. And, uh, and I'll be providing you with some homework, Lewis structure homework, as well as um, reference material videos to work on these.